with the recent release of Horizon Forbidden West DLC, The Burning Shores, some have floated the idea that it's the best looking open world game of all time. Now that's a bold claim. If you didn't know, the game runs on the Decima engine and Guerrilla Games, the developer, has spoken out about the engine and its future plans on the PlayStation 5. Also, we got a surprise announcement that is sure to please Horizon fans. Additionally, in today's video, we're going to discuss the rumors of an all new PlayStation showcase. And if said rumors started by Jeff Grubb have merits and Marvel Spider-Man developer Insomniac Games does something big to prepare for the release of the highly anticipated Spider-Man 2. All this and much, much more in today's edition of the Salty's PlayStation News Report. Cue the intro. People keep asking if I'm back. And I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Woo! Let's go, PlayStation Nation. Yes, it's me. I'm finally back after almost three months since the last time I did a video. Insane. Now, there's probably a lot of my haters that thought I fell off or probably still do think that I fell off. But you know what? because I'm back and we're better than ever, baby. You probably wonder where I've been up to or what I've been up to, rather. Well, I just got my balls chopped off. No, I didn't get my balls completely chopped off. I got a vasectomy, so that put me down for a little bit. And uh, yeah, I lost some power, got divorced. What else has been going on? Three months, a lot of time. Time goes by quick, though. Just want to let you guys know that I love you. I'm glad you're still here, that you haven't unsubscribed. There are some people that unsubscribe, but hopefully they'll make their way back. Put that salt signal out there. Salt Nation, let them know we're back and we're better than ever. But like I teased in the intro, Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC hit, and I'm seeing it all over my timeline on Twitter. If you guys aren't following me there, you can follow me at saltiest underscore gaming to stay up to date with all my meme-tastic content that I put on there and my shit posts. But like I was saying, all over social media, I'm seeing clips and pics of Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores. People saying over and over that it is the best looking open world world game of all time. Now, like I said in the intro, those are bold claims, but a lot of people have video proof and picture proof to back up those claims. Now, I need to put a little message out there to everybody out there in YouTube land. I have not bought the DLC yet. I'm planning on getting that a little bit later. I platinumed the game and I kind of tired myself out of Horizon at this point. I'm getting ready, locked and loaded for Star Wars, the new game that's coming out, Jedi Survivor. So I'm replaying through that, but I would will get my feet wet, as they say. I will buy the DLC probably sometime in the fall. We'll see, we'll see. But when it comes to the argument of what is the best looking open world game of all time, a couple come to mind. One of which is Ghost of Tsushima for me personally. That game is mind blowing and face melting in terms of graphics. Another one, Red Dead Redemption 2 was up there. That came out years ago, so it might be down the totem pole. But in terms of graphic fidelity in an open world game, any game pretty much that's on the Decima engine stands above the rest. And this includes Death Stranding and Death Stranding 2, which will be made on the Decima engine as well. Hideo Kojima used the engine, a modified version of it. And my God, the graphics, the facial animations, everything's top notch. So the people making claims that it is the best looking game of all time, open world wise, might have basis to their claims. Now talking about the Decima engine, Guerrilla Games, the developer says it has ambitious plans for the future. Michael, Vanderloo, technical director, has revealed that the studio has ambitious plans for the company's Decima engine in the wake of an announcement that management shake up at the studio. Now, don't worry. It's more of promotions rather than cutting people like Microsoft likes to do. He added that he would be focusing his attention on the ambitious future plans for the Decima engine. As previously reported, Guerrilla Games studio director Angie Smet is leaving the company and she's going to be promoted within. So on the topic, of Guerrilla Games Horizon Forbidden West DLC. They're working on a multiplayer spinoff. I talked about that in other videos and also at this point, it has been revealed that they're working on the third installment of the Horizon franchise. This was pretty much put out there by them. It's not a surprise or a shock to anybody that played and beat Horizon Forbidden West. There's a big tease there. And 
for how hard pause that PlayStation is pushing this franchise. It is no surprise that they're knee deep in the process of making the third game. They have a PS VR 2 title, Call of the Mountain. Like I said, that multiplayer spinoff. They're pumping these things out like they're candy, okay? But in terms of the engine itself, Vanderloo revealed in a LinkedIn post that he's working full time on the engine, which is powering all these titles. To be honest, I think the Decima engine is up there in terms of graphics, but I'd still take the Unreal Engine because my God, some of the stuff I've seen on Unreal Engine, the latest version is incredible. It's kind of splitting hairs when you ask me about this and it depends game to game and especially the talent of the developer matters as well. But I want to know from you guys, what is the best looking open world game of all time? Is it Horizon or Death Stranding with the Decima engine? Or is it another game, possibly a game on Unreal or some other engine that you think will take that crown? Let's talk about it. In other news, let's talk about a rumor that has been started by our good friend, Jeff Grubb, the insider out there. Now, when I say the term insider, I use it loosely very loosely because a lot of these insiders throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. A recent example of that with Jeff would be his prediction or his statement in regards to Hi-Fi Rush not meeting sales expectations for Microsoft. He recently came out and bent the knee to Microsoft after I think Aaron Greenberg put out some bullshit PR that it did just fine. Jeff Grubb came out, made a video and walked his shit back, bent the knee, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is just an example of these people saying things, predicting things, making statements like they're truths, when in reality, a lot of the times they're not. And when it comes to the PlayStation Showcase, uh, this is more of a meme at this point because the PlayStation Showcase, I don't know if you've been watching the videos for a long time, a long time subscriber, but these quote unquote insiders were each month putting out a new prediction of when the showcase was gonna happen, month after month after month passed, and they were wrong. So they kept extending it, right? Oh, I was just kidding, it's not coming out this month. It's going to be uh, July. And, oh, it's not going to be that August, September, October, November. All of a sudden, we're stretching out into like six months, eight months of this bullshit. These insiders pretty much gave up. Okay. They stopped predicting because they just knew that it just wasn't going to happen. But as time progresses, people forget about it. We're getting close to the summer games fest. So guess what happens? You start these up, right? Because it's an easy guess, like Jeff Grubb, for example, to put out a prediction that Sony will have a showcase. He put out the prediction that June 8 will be the deadline and that the event will take place before that. Now, why did he throw that out there? Because it's easy, right? Let's say the showcase is going to happen in May. Now, if it doesn't happen in May, maybe June or July, and we continue to do this, right? Am I saying that the showcase won't happen in May? I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that Sony runs a tight ship and they very rarely let information out these days. And the people that are legit insiders, they get shut down. We've seen multiple examples of this. So I wouldn't hold your breath when it comes to a new showcase happening in May. Now, if it happens, that that is fantastic. Do I give Jeff Grubb credit for his prediction? Uh, no, I don't because it's an easy guess. Now, does PlayStation need to have a showcase? I don't think that they do. I think they're on a roll. You see this with the sales figures. They're outpacing the PlayStation 4's sales pace, even with the limitations and stock supply shortages, etc., etc. This PlayStation has momentum that is unmatched. They have Final Fantasy 16 and Spider-Man 2 coming out, so they're not hurting. But it would be nice for the fans to kind of get a roadmap of what's going going on past this year, going into 2024. Rumors of this handheld are on deck. Rumors of the PlayStation 5 Pro, etc. It would be nice for the brass of PlayStation to touch base with his fan base. Kind of put out that roadmap. Right now, unfortunately, they just don't have any competition because Microsoft continually bumbles and stumbles over themselves. They can't put a must-play game out to save their lives. Redfall's a joke. Starfield is going to be another disaster. So PlayStation is kind of competing with themselves right now, which they've been doing for the last couple of years at least. So I'm not worried about them, but I want to know what you guys think of this rumor started by Jeff. You think we're going to have a showcase in May or maybe June? Do you want to see that? What do you want to see at the showcase? Let's talk about it. And speaking of Marvel's Spider-Man 2, which is coming out this fall, there's a new story that's out that Marvel Spider-Man developer Insomniac Games is raising their developer count to over 500, 520 employees to be exact. Guys have been living on a rock and some 
somehow don't know who Insomniac is, well, they're the studio that PlayStation struck gold with and acquired for less than $300 million. They're the studio responsible for games like Spider-Man, like I mentioned, Ratchet and Clank. On LinkedIn, on a profile, the company has stated that they're at 520 employees. The studio is currently hard at work to get Marvel Spider-Man 2 out for its release in the fall. So I think a lot of those hirings are for that specifically, but the studio is divided up into multiple divisions that work on different projects. We saw that with Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. That game came out and then we saw Spider-Man Miles Morales and you have the actual Spider-Man game. So they're not all working on one thing like Microsoft in 343, how they hired whatever amount of employees it was and they couldn't even get a quality game out. Insomnia Games is one of the best studios in the entire industry. The pace at which they put out quality games is unmatched. There's not a studio out there that's putting out the quality of games at the pace that this studio is putting out their games. And with them hiring extra employees, I think that that just speaks volumes of how healthy and how productive that studio is and how much faith that Sony has in that studio. And also it gives them the opportunity to work on other projects, maybe projects that we haven't seen in a while. Cough, cough, resistance, cough, cough. But anyway, I want to know from you guys, are you excited for Spider-Man 2 in the fall? What do you think of this increase in employees up to over 500 for Insomniac and who is the best developer in the industry? Let's talk about it. But anyway, that's it for today's edition of the saltiest PlayStation News Report. It's good to be back. Like I said, I want to thank each and every one of you guys that have stayed subscribed, listened to my content or watch it or whatever. I couldn't do this without you and I want you guys to know that I appreciate you. If you guys are new and you made it all the way to the end, I want to thank you as well. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all my content, including our podcast that happens on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's going to do it for me and the saltiest PlayStation News Report. Have a great day. We'll catch you guys on the next one. And as always, stay salty, my friends.